Hi, I'm Dr. Martha Grogan. I'm the director of the Cardiac Amyloid Clinic at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And today I'd like to share with you what's the current state of the art of treatment for patients with cardiac amyloidosis. We do have some new medications and truly we are kind of entering a brave new world. So it's important to recognize that there are two main types of amyloid that can affect the heart. The first is AL or light chain amyloid. And the problem there is a problem in the bone marrow. There are excessive plasma cells, these are the purple cells here, that make too much immunoglobulin. And we all make immunoglobulin to try to fight infection, but you can think of it as your bone marrow goes haywire and makes too much of this protein. And the protein actually happens to have this long piece called the heavy chain and the shorter one called the light chain that can be measured in the blood, that can help be a clue to the uh, diagnosis, and also can be uh, used to monitoring uh, therapy. Transthyretin amyloid is a completely different type of protein. It's a protein that we all make that is produced by the liver, and it transports thyroid hormone and retinal binding protein, or vitamin A, throughout the body. There are two types of amyloid, uh, TTR amyloid. One is hereditary, in which a patient inherits a mutation that makes the protein unstable, and it does what we call misfold and then form amyloid fibrils. Or the wild type, in which there's no mutation. Wild type is just a genetics term, meaning that it's the uh, type of protein found in nature. And we don't know why the protein is unstable in patients with wild type TTR. It may be due to aging or other factors in the bloodstream. And this is one that used to be called senile or senile cardiac amyloidosis. However, individuals even less than 50 years of age can get this condition. And if you want to know what all the letters mean, A just means amyloid and X is the precursor of protein, so that AL is light chain amyloid, and ATTTR is uh, transthyretin amyloid. So here is the liver producing uh, normal transthyretin. Here's the liver cell, and it produces this protein called TTR that should circulate intact throughout the bloodstream. But in amyloid patients, it's breaking apart. And you can see that these smaller subunits then kind of glom together and they form this long stringy like gunk that can get into the organs and tissues of the body, particularly the heart or the nerves. And that's the amyloid that a pathologist will see uh, if we do a biopsy. So again, back to AL and TTR, when we think about them uh, affecting the heart, they both make the heart thicker than usual because this amyloid fibril uh, uh, forms and deposits between the cells uh, of the heart and make it harder for the heart to pump and makes the heart much less elastic. And then some of these circulating light chains and some of the other subunits from TTR amyloid also can be hard on the heart and make the heart muscle not work properly. There are different clinical features depending on which type of amyloid a patient has so that the uh, AL patients uh, may have uh, heart failure often with other organ involvement. They might have liver involvement, peripheral or autonomic neuropathy, nephrotic syndrome, macroglossia, carpal tunnel syndrome. And then hereditary patients may have either heart failure or peripheral or autonomic neuropathy or an overlap uh, between those. And wild type patients usually have heart failure, often with either carpal tunnel syndrome, biceps tendon rupture, spinal stenosis, or atrial fibrillation. And this can often happen several years before uh, heart failure uh, uh, begins. So how do we treat amyloid? First important thing to know is that AL and ATTR amyloid are completely different in their treatment. So in AL amyloidosis, hematologists use treatment directed at the bone marrow to wipe out those excessive plasma cells that are making the immunoglobulin. This is chemotherapy or sometimes what's called an autologous uh, stem cell transplant to treat this condition. And the response rates and survival are improving the key is to make the diagnosis and start treatment as early as possible. For TTR amyloid, we've had several new medications just within the past few years. And there's really three different ways that have been thought of to try to treat TTR amyloid. One is to try to shut the liver down, silence the liver so that it doesn't make the transthyretin uh, protein. 
And there are uh, two medications listed here, enotericin and patisseran, which basically go into the liver and tell the liver, do everything you're supposed to do, but just don't make transthyretin. And these reduce the amount of uh, transthyretin that's produced quite dramatically, so the body only makes about 10 or 15% of what it usually would have made. So if there's less protein to make the amyloid, then that can significantly slow down the progression of the disease. And that has been shown for patients with hereditary amyloid with uh, neuropathy, that these medications are beneficial in slowing the progression, maybe even improving the disease. And they are now being tested in patients with cardiac dysfunction. In addition, both of these now have what I would consider the next generation that are being tested in clinical trials, which are medications that are going to be more easily delivered and less uh, frequent therapy. So there's a lot going on uh, from the standpoint of what we call silencer therapy that works at the level of the liver. As far as stabilizing proteins, there are small molecules that actually bind here and help keep the TTR together so that it doesn't break apart and cause amyloid. Tafamidus is one that has been approved specifically for the treatment of TTR amyloid uh, with cardiac involvement. Diflunosol is another medication that has been shown in a clinical trial to slow the progression of neuropathy in patients with hereditary disease. And it's probably beneficial for cardiac patients, but many cardiac patients can't take this if they have a lot of fluid building up or problems with their kidneys or a tendency towards bleeding. Uh, both of those are agents that are uh, 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 currently available, whereas AG10 is another stabilizer that's currently in clinical de uh, development in what we call clinical trials. So you'll be hearing more about uh, uh, these type of uh, agents in the future uh, and perhaps even ones that we don't know of yet. The last type of treatment that has been tried are things to try to break up amyloid fibrils and medications such as doxycycline and something called Tudka. Tudka is torosodeoxycholic acid. It's actually a supplement that you can get off the uh, internet. It comes from the bile acid of bears. And these two things together in a mouse model seem to break up amyloid fibrils. But we don't have too much information about them actually helping patients uh, at, at this time, but perhaps more information will be forthcoming. And there is what's called a monoclonal antibody, uh, PRX004, that's in the early phase of clinical trials to see if that will break up uh, uh, amyloid and if that will improve outcomes in patients. So I've listed a lot of these, and this is something that's going to be changing in the future with probably new agents and more clinical trials and more data coming out. Historically, liver transplant was also used only for hereditary patients. It, it doesn't work for patients with wild type because they're not producing uh, uh, what's called a mutant protein. But in liver transplant, the, uh, the liver making the abnormal protein is removed and the liver making normal protein is then replaced. This probably won't be as necessary in the future, although in certain patients early on and with certain mutations, it might still be used uh, at, at times. And then occasionally we use heart transplant for patients with cardiac amyloidosis, either the AL type or the TTR type. So really, I think it's important for you to know that if you or your loved one has cardiac amyloidosis, that for the common types, we now have treatment available. There are uh, new agents being tested in what we call clinical trials, and the only way we really find out if these medications work is if we study them in the proper scientific uh, way, and that's very important to consider. The outcomes are improving for patients, and for all patients, getting an early diagnosis and treatment is key. So if you happen to be in a family that you know that you have a tendency towards amyloidosis, that can be the importance of early uh, monitoring. And for other patients, uh, sometimes raising awareness even with your own doctors and in the medical community so that more patients get diagnosed earlier when treatment is most likely to be beneficial. Thank you very much for your attention.